it wine, wine, wine Kick my feet up when I get tired And as I recline, take another sip Let my thoughts unwind, wine Sip it and spill it Sip it and spill it, sip it and spill it the tea Sip it and spill it What is poppin', everyone? Uh, bitch is poppin' pussy on a fucking Monday. <laughs> Let's I go. Let's go. I feel like we're already feeling it. You feeling yourself? I'm, I'm feeling always so feeling. I'm always feeling myself, but I feel like a few extra shots is what does they say? Genesis quoi? I don't know what the fuck that means, but it sounds like some shit you just say when you feeling yourself. Genesis quoi means like what? A a a uh, like a, a do like a certain genesis quoi? Like for in like. I don't know. I'm feeling like a certain aesthetic. That's I don't know. I don't either. But we always say a lot of shit we don't mean. So it yeah. don't mean shit to me, but I'm feeling it. Whatever it is, it is feeling me. So we are in little cute bunny uniforms. Costumes. costumes. Uniforms make it seem like, you know, it's it's work it's giving related. school. <laughs> or it's giving, it's giving butler. <laughs> it's giving butler. Yeah, we wanted to um, do a little, little, a little song, song, you know, because we did it last year, so we wanted to make it a tradition. I think I we like only made it. I feel like we made it a tradition last year because we've never wore costumes because we always recorded mm -hmm. in October. We never did costumes. We never did costumes. Last year just felt like the year to do it, and now we here yeah, we are. I feel like costumes should always be a thing every Halloween time. I feel like every Halloween, everyone deserves to be a slut for 24 hours. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, it's just, it's like a fantasy of some people. They're like, I want to dress slutty, but I, that's not me. That's not my aesthetic. And, you know, I feel like... So Halloween is the one day... That you can act... Okay, act okay, act Mean Girls. Of. Halloween is the one day that you can dress slutty as fuck as a Mean Girl quote. Oh, is it? Yeah. Hashtag Mean Hashtag Girls mean for girls. Life. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag that movie made like us. It really did. It really did. Mean Girls is like a stamp in our and Mean, mean Girls, Clueless, like all these white movies are very much aesthetic like driven. Mm -hmm. But we like you know try to find a way to put our urban twist on it. We did. We do. And we did. And we are okay. So let's get some other like, story time. So I saw this little clip and I, it was kind of funny to me. At the same time, it had me thinking. So um, I don't know what's the name of the whole YouTube experiment, but people are on blind dates. So they are like... Uh, Let's compare it to Love is Blind, to be honest, if you say it like that. Well, it's kind of like Love is Blind, except they they can physically touch each other. But can they see each other? They can't see each other. So let's say love and blind. So yeah, it's like love and blind. They got the blind foes and they're talking to one each other. And this girl was kind of like fetishizing this Asian guy. And she didn't know he was Asian, of course. And she was like, yeah, I love this. I love this. And his guy was smiling. He was so happy. Like he was like so into her because he was like, damn, she's into me. And then he was slick with it. He was like, can I have a hug? And he hugged her and he realized she had some extra pounds on her. And he immediately sat down and pressed the red button. And I'm just like, God damn, like you could have really been into it this reminds, girl. It reminds me of the show Next. Like right when someone <laughs> called the bus. Next. Next. <laughs> Bro, that show was fun. Can you imagine him somebody coming on the bus, the bus and somebody and immediately, Cry. But that brings it. That's what's like a topic to even talk about, though, because it's like sometimes your preference is the reason why you're single. Because you were yeah. gonna get into it, you're gonna say that could have been his blessing. That could have been his blessing. She could have been the woman of his dreams, but mm -hmm. because he hugged her and she wasn't the um, size he preferred, he immediately next her. But he was feeling her until he knew he she was bigger. I think that's so, why there's shows like that that are invented to make people get to know each other for who they are. Yeah, and I feel like because social media and I don't know where in the world aesthetics don't matter. In certain places, aesthetics matter more than most. And I feel like people are getting BBL. People are going to fucking different countries to get BBLs. Yeah. So I feel like United States is the state and the stamp of being aesthetically like pleasing and or modification because of you want to fit the preference of your preferred, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I mean, I... 
I'm not really mad at him because I'm just like, you can be like, okay, then you don't like big girls. I can't, you can't force someone to like big people. But it's like, damn. Why, why are you about to say like that? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Bro. I don't, like how saying, that, I don't like how that came out. <laughs> well, I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just saying you can't force him to like that, yeah. you know. But I feel like Aesthetic. you should at least give the person a chance. Like, even if it was me and I hugged and you were big, I want to just immediately be like, Nick. If, if I was feeling the whole time up until then, I'd be like, Sammy. What? Now Samantha. <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> See you, Maka. <laughs> you think I would? Yes. Immediately next. Yes. Because he was big. Yes. Oh my no. Sam, have you ever talked to a big nigga? <laughs> it's you don't have to defend yourself to me. I'm not I've never talked to a big guy. Have you ever? But, have but, you ever had a desire to talk to a big guy? But maybe the reason why I've never talked to a big guy is because I always looked at he was big, and then I never got his personality. Exactly. If it, if it was always the opposite, where I'm already feeling your personality, and then later I found out you're big, I could probably I could uh, ignore the fact that you're big. I feel like personality only trumps when you already see them, so you see what you're working with. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, come on, we we know. I can speak. I I can speak for that. Your personality will trump if I already see what you look like. I'm like, oh my, I can work with this, you know. What I mean? <laughs> but if I ain't never and, seen you, and then and it's just like too much to work with, you're like, damn. I mean, I'm not saying I have big phobia, but I'm saying I've never dated a big nigga, and I probably won't. It's because I work out. I want the nigga I work out. So that's just it. It's not saying that it's a problem. It's just not our preference, and there's nothing wrong with that. We don't yeah. have to. You don't have to defend your preference. That's what I'm saying. I can't force him to like a big exactly. Girl. Don't defend your preference because it makes it sound guilty when you're like you're like no because i don't know his personality i'm not trying to get to know your personality if you're not fitting my aesthetic damn that's but we're shallow everyone is mm -hmm. let's be real I'll, are you are you shallow i, don't Rax, I know you hear shallow. us do you, are you shallow do you did you ever look at a woman and say i want to get to know her fucking personality first before i make a decision <laughs> You did? That's amazing. I feel we need like more people like you. <laughs> we do. Cause I don't think I'm super shallow. I think Houston has made me shallow. Yeah. Because I honestly. Like I, I talk to guys who aren't like the most attractive. And because. I've talked to niggas that are not the most attractive. Yeah. So I mean. Got me nowhere. <laughs> Go for what you like, bitches. <laughs> Go for what you like. I'm sick of her. <laughs> I'm sick of her. Today. But that's nor here nor there. So guess what? What? The bitches but, are back at it again. With another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill where we create conversations all while. Sip and wine. I go by the name of Thug Motherfucking Sammy. And I'm ambitious, the bunny, Teray. We are, I'm feeling, I'm feeling these outfits. I really am. I, I feel wish like they, they were good. more corset, corsetti. Facts. I do, but I like that it came with so many things. And yeah. like, cause you know, you paid for what you got. You do. And me. usually you don't. So yeah. thank you, Amazon. We'll put the link in the bio. I'm just kidding. We're not putting I'm the link in the bio. I'm definitely not doing that <laughs> shit. You ain't getting this outfit, bitch. But what y'all can do is follow us on all social media platforms at The Real Sip and Spill at Sip and Spill 1. Except Twitter, which, which is, is Sip and Spill 1. I, <laughs> it's I think okay. You, I think you messed it up. It's, it's the Real Sip and Spill, except Twitter, which is Sip and Spill 1. <laughs> and give us a five-star rating. Give me five some five-star star bitches. bitches. If you haven't already, follow us. Our TikToks, our Reels, our Sip and Review. When you sit and share, we review it. Um, Our Sip, sip and Spill, spill shop. shop. Ah! Guys, we have amazing news. Amazing news. We actually went there and handle the world face on outside it. of the fucking media because we, we were like it, we absolutely did and we backed up the product that we put out and we went to a pop-up shop which we decided we we're gonna do more of because we sold three shirts yeah granted everyone that told us about the shirt that's like oh i'm gonna probably wear it to the gym i'm gonna probably cut it up eh, eh, eh. that's cool as long as our brand's you, out there i don't care what you do with it as long as you buy it i know so <laughs> we get it some of this motherfucking money <laughs> okay big part because you know what if we gonna break even we're gonna break even on a good end okay make sure you Motherfucking tax some niggas though. So, okay. All right. Rathers? Let us get some fucking would you rathers. So in the honor of spooky, spooky season, season, I'm still doing the spooky, spooky shit. Why are you are you mad? <laughs> yes, because you Damn, are you <laughs> did you just wake up to be a hater today? <laughs> yes, I did. Damn, how does it feel to wake up and be a hater? It feels just as great as it does the other I days. I don't know. I, I couldn't wake up and be a hater. You know what I'm saying? Hater rate has been on the menu I since ninety three. Just be a motherfucking hater. That just if, feels if you can own hard. it, you gotta own it right. So <laughs> and I do. So let's go. All right, hater. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna give him my spooky widget and violet. Would you rather have a friendly but scary looking monster under your bed okay. for the rest of your life okay. or have terrible nightmares? 
for the rest of your life. I would rather have a friendly, scoopy, um, ugly looking nigga under my bed. <laughs> Who said it was a nigga? I'm not saying it was, but I just that's my that's my that's my vocab. Excuse me, I'm not speaking for the I men. Said monster. Okay, the monster. I mean, like, what's up, Casper? My bro, like my dude. I I I X Casper's Y and Z. A ghost. He's not a monster. <laughs> a ghost is a monster. That shit scares people. But anywho, I would rather have that because at least you're friendly. No, I don't like scary movies. I hate spooky season. This actually the this is the worst season in the world. I don't <laughs> like being scared. Okay. I don't like haunted houses. So shit like that. Nah, I can't do it for the rest of my life. So if you want to come visit me every single day, I'm like, yo, what's up? And at least Casper was friendly. Casper was a friendly ghost. So yeah. Mine is, would you rather be a Playboy bunny or a Victoria's Secret model? <sighs> I would rather be a Victoria's Secret model. Why? At least I have more control of my body. No, you wouldn't. Um, you're you're still like trying to throw up this a size aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like Playboy bunnies had the opportunity to be that girl in any size as they were. Cause you know some bitches were a lot like Anna Nicole Smith. She wasn't small, but mm -hmm. she still Playboy bunny, and she was making bread, and she married two rich niggas. Okay, I'll be Playboy bunny. Okay. Take that shit off. Take that a, shit off. I'll be Victoria's <clears throat> Secret model. I make money in my own terms. Too many Playboy bunnies were, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be on Playboy. I mean, I don't, I don't care about being on Playboy, but uh, I just, I guess Victoria's Secret model was really just like, there was an era in our life where Victor being a Victoria's Secret model was like being that girl. That's a fact. So, the same for Playboy Bunny too, though. I know, but to me, so it depends I, on the era. It just, I guess it depends on the person because you see Playboy Bunny as that girl and I see being a Victoria's Secret model as being Kim that Kardashian girl. Kim was in Playboy. So, and good for her. A that lot of people were in Playboy. And they got money. A lot of people are in Playboy. I'm not. It's cool. That's that's not my go to. I want because you're a Kendall. No, I'm it's not boring and white. I was just comparing. We're talking about Kardashians in the in the sense of Kim was on that and Kendall was on Victoria. Like, I don't like being compared to Kendall. I don't like being compared to any kind of white woman. Actually, okay, yeah. I might not do it again. <laughs> I might do it again. Who knows? If you do it, that's fine. I'm, I'm correct you. <laughs> Don't compare me to a white woman. So let's get into some motherfucking wine facts. So we can get into some motherfucking tea time. Tea, tea time. time. So today, I'm going to make it very easy, sweet for y'all because I know that I didn't look up the information and I'm not going to lie to y'all and act like I did. So today we're drinking Tribute, which is a 2019 Cabernet, which is from California. It has 13.5% alcohol percentage. So let's try this shit. I volunteer as tribute. Mm -hmm. You know, Hunger Games, bitch. I know exactly what you're talking May the about. odds forever be in your favor. Are you ready? Can you give me a glass? Yeah, bring it closer to you. Cabs are dry. I feel like it's like the most satisfying thing to hear the first pour of the cab. Like, I like that look. <laughs> it's a satisfying sound. And I love a good twisty, y'all. It makes my life so much easier. It makes the life so much easier. And if we don't finish it, we can still take it with us. Because when you got the cork and shit, it's hard. It's hard. Cheers to another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill. Ow. Mm, okay. Mm. Mm. It don't smell too dry to me. It actually tastes really good. Okay. It's kind of dry, though. Is it really? Mm -hmm. It's not giving dry. Yeah, it's a little dry to me, but it's still good. It's, it's I think good. this is better than what we had last week. I don't what did we have last week? Last week it was a hard, it was really hard for me Some to finish. Oh she <laughs> I don't know. But this isn't bad. It's just kind of dry for me, but it's doable. So I can own We like doables. We like doables. The big D, not the little. So let's get into some motherfucking tea time. Tea, tea time. time. So it looked like Angela Simmons and Yo Gotti was getting kind of cozy. They were both seen in Dubai. You know, um, both driving the same little little uh, ATV cars, you know. It could have been Shade been putting two and two together and getting nothing, or it could have been Shade been putting two and two together and getting Angela Simpson and Yo Gotti is kind of getting cozy. So the power of social media is that what is what you're saying right now, because who knows if it was the same time? Because what if they just posted it to be funny? You got to be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever posted an old video making like it seem like it was new just to make some fucking news or a buzz? 
Absolutely not. You know what? I, I guess because as as an influencer that I am, okay, I think that sometimes you have to like you know sprinkle a little something on social media to make it seem like more than it is. Like sometimes you gotta act like you're mad at your nigga, even when you're perfectly happy, just so you can you know up to see what is she up to. Let me be investigating nation. Okay. So for me, I'm like, you know, maybe it was rumors. Maybe it was true. Because, you know, maybe it's the power of manifestation, you know, mm-hmm. because we see it happen before, you know, B. Simone was chasing um, the baby for a minute mm-hmm. and then he finally gave her a video. But then she like, did, went, he, did he ever give her some dick? That is up for interpretation. Because I feel like that's what she, what she wanted. Right. She didn't want a video. She wanted him. I mean, maybe he did give her some dick. OK, but maybe that's not disclosed in her. Um. You know, um, what is it? Maybe that's why Danny Lee and her and beefed up because she did that get That probably money. might be the reason why they're beefed Cause up. Because, like, I mean, she was very loud and proud of how much she loved the baby. And even though she said it was joking, but if the, he would have slid in the ends, be like, come through. But I just feel like it's, it, it, has to, it has to be she probably got dick because it's like they're so far removed from each other. They don't even hang out in the same crowds. We don't know that. I'm absolutely sure that B. Simone is not hanging out with the same people as Danny Lee. Danny Lee is boring. Oh, like. Okay. She gives me... Maybe because she's a mom. She's just chilling, taking care of her baby. She was boring before she was a mom. Mm. It's giving vanilla. It's giving, it's giving white women. I so, mean, she is a white Hispanic woman. Is she okay. Uh, either way, though, I'm saying, like, Maybe Danny Lee was not on anyone's radar until she was, like, trying to teach rappers how to dance. Like, I think she went viral because she tried to teach um, Lil Durk a dance, and he was like, nah, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> That's literally what I remember her for. That's what you remember. Her. I remember her for her her one song with Chris Brown. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I remember her from Yellow Bunnies. Like Danny Lee's always Yellow been in some Bunnies, shit. Yellow She always been in some shit. So I'm not gonna give her her flowers. She gotta earn her flowers from me. I'm so Bro, sorry. As a black skin woman, reference to Baby Mama Pipeline for me. <laughs> 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 Bitch, shut the fuck up. Let's go to more pressing matters, y'all. Can we please pray? Wait, wait, wait. I wanted. I just wanted to say uh, about Angela. Simmons and your Gotti situation is be careful about the nigga who's been wanting you for a long time because this nigga has been made it clear for years he's wanted Angela Simmons. I just follow Angela uh, Simmons. Simmons. What? So that whole DM song, his Instagram tweet, I mean his, his Instagram post. So I Wasn't don't know. Wasn't there a time where he only was following her? I'm not sure if it was true. I but don't know, but that's something that was very possible. So that's true. He, he's always been very vocal how much he likes, he likes her. her. So, and I know sometimes when we finally let the nigga who be wanting us hit, ain't never worth it. Because he's probably hitting just to get his lift back. Like, I'm going to see if I can get this bitch because it took so long type shit. Do we not do that though? <laughs> no. I think we could. Maybe you. Mm, you same. probably, maybe you do that. Yeah. I don't do that. I got some people that I got on fucking revenge list. Like, see? I'm about to Fuck ruin your fucking fucks. life. Ruin your fucking I'm life. Fucking because I just want some revenge. But you know, let's move on to revenge. some. <laughs> <laughs> More pressing matters. matters. Free Kanye West. Free him from the shackles of Free your fucking. Free Kanye from himself. Can I finish? Finish. Oh my God. I have to finish, Samantha. Finish. And I feel it very strongly. Free him from the shackles of y'all's fucking opinions. Cause he's human. He is a black man with a mental illness. And y'all are literally putting him on display for your fucking entertainment. Like mm. he does what gets him views. And y'all keep feeding into it every fucking year. How many times a year do we talk about him? Enough. Come and does it, does it does it stop his pockets? something crazy every three months. Exactly. And guess what? We keep feeding into it. Like, does it ever surprise us from anything that comes out of his mouth? Never ever surprises since he us. said slavery was a choice, I was like... There is literally... Anything could come out of his mouth. Once that nigga said George Bush hates white people, I knew he was on to something. <laughs> <laughs> like, that nigga looked dead in the camera <laughs> <He> on <laughs> MTV. Yes, he, he did. He said George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you said, you said George Bush hates white people. <laughs> Shit. He should. No, he said George Bush. I think I was trying to give my narrative instead of his. But yeah, George Bush don't give a fuck about black people and don't and won't and did it. Okay? Katrina proved it and his father proved it too. So I just felt like I don't know why. I felt strongly that he should. strongly that George Bush should should hate white He should hate the white people, but he hates the blacks. You know, sorry. George Bush does not care about black people. I remember that scene. um, What's his name? That little, that... British man from I don't um, fucking know, but it was on MTV and that shit was so funny. Cause I'm just looking at like I'm like Austin Powers. That's what it was. It was I'm just looking like, like I'm like, and this nigga said with the straightest face of straightest he faces. He said George Bush so don't care about black people. You have to understand people. what you're dealing with. Already dealing with something like that. That man believes wholeheartedly in anything he says. Everything so you he can, says. That's, and that's how I feel. That's why I, I, he's my relative because whatever I say, I say it. 
So take it to the bank of how you feel about it. Cause he not gonna take that shit back. When have we ever seen him give a fucking apology other than Sway? He's gave a couple. He I mean, didn't even apologize this way. He said he didn't even apologize. He, he said Sway had all had all the answers. But that's not that's, even an apology. That's him apologizing <laughs> in Kanye <laughs> way. But um he's apologized to Kim a couple times for his fuck shit. You gotta apologize to the bitch that got your kids. Shit. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen him do it. But uh yeah. I mean, Kanye, I think like I keep saying, he has a mental illness. So I feel like we should stop giving him attention. I and, feel like it's And what he said he's was in the that, middle of an episode and people are continuously putting cameras in his face and he's losing endorsement deals. And I just wanna find it I find it funny how they're so quick to um, cancel him because of what he said about Jewish people. But when he says all that shit about black people, it's fine. There's no cancellation. But oh, it is what it is. can't say anything about white people. Yeah. Like, anything that is correlated to what like, makes the economy running. Uh, 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 remember uh, uh, what they did to fucking Nick Cannon. Yeah. Like, anything that is Jewish anti-white or, or yeah, yeah, sem- Semitic, sem- mm-hmm. I don't know. Anti-Semitic. Yeah. That word. Mm-hmm. That shit. Respectfully, black people were the first Jews and we just not going to get into that right now. Mm-hmm. But, okay. That's just where we're at. And we're going to land on that plane. So outside of that, let's get into Glorilla. Glorilla. We're going to tell her this the entire time when we're talking about her. What? <laughs> That's how she talk. That is how she talk. <laughs> so on the phone, I told Ami that Glorilla's middle name was Hallelujah. And Ami really didn't believe me. She had to look that shit up. And I'm like, her middle name is Hallelujah. The thing about Sammy, y'all, she knows random facts that <laughs> no one will fucking know. Why the fuck would I know that her middle name is Hallelujah? She said it in a tweet. My middle name Hallelujah. But I don't be on Twitter like you. <laughs> she said it. And Honestly, I was like, oh, shit, her middle name Hallelujah for real. You know what? She what? must come from a very religious background. So her mother wants to insert the fact that she knew that this woman was going Gloria. to hire. <laughs> that really sounds like she was really blessing this child before the she pussy like, came out of the, the pussy. She was so like, you know what? I'm not even mad at that because Glorilla turned all- out to be a rapper talking and- about. <laughs> I'm the biggest one is me. You know, and little, she's so little. little. Like, like, you know what I love about her? I love that Glorilla literally like embraces her. the fact that she's little but calls her a big dog. Because I that's that I to myself as a little ass short person i'm not gonna say as little as like size wise but as short i'm like yeah i'm the big dog little nigga but i'm lying hearted mm-hmm. so you know i resonate with that so i love the whole narrative of being the biggest she, baddest bitch you can be i love every time she talks about how big her booty is she's like oh my booty's so big ah, ah. i'm like yes girl <laughs> i yes, feel like you gotta be your biggest fan until you are like fake it till you make it i didn't like lorilla i, I absolutely don't attack love her. her i mm-hmm. love her like there's nothing i could say bad about her not yet I don't think there's ever going to be because I mean even with Cardi when Cardi came out like I feel like I love people that are authentically them and Themselves. just stay that way because mm-hmm, yeah. Cardi's always been herself the only thing she fixed still was her to teeth to this day she's still herself she's still arguing with people on Twitter I'm like damn bitch you have not changed but I'm at saying, all but I'm saying literally it reminds me of a younger Cardi because the yeah. only thing that Cardi changed about herself was her teeth mm-hmm. same thing about Glorilla all she changed was her teeth. I yeah. mean, granted, Cardi got the booty shit before she even became famous. So, yeah. bitch knew what she was going. She's like, I'm going to become a rapper with the well, fat Well, I mean, she was a dancer, so it made sense for her to I have I know, but BBL. I'm saying, so it's not like she did that because of the um, industry. She did Absolutely it, not. She, she already had it. already had it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I, I would love if Glorilla stays the way she is and doesn't change it to the rap aesthetic of getting a BBL. I, yeah. I really hope you don't, Gloria. Gloria? I mean, Meg Thee Stallion didn't. I feel like there's, there's setting a well, tone. Well, Meg already had it. You ain't got to go get it if you already. Had it. Megan had Bitch, everything. Her name is a stallion. Yeah, Megan the had the ass, the titties, the stomach, now, now the face. Stalli- the stallion yeah. became the fucking what? What is it? A Pegasus? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, that'll be a problem. Like, bitch, we yeah. don't need a mega, mega stallion. <laughs> okay, bitch? Stay how you is. Bitch was already mega. <laughs> already mega. Ooh. Already the stallion. Already the stallion. <laughs> but I'm just saying, Megan set like a tone of being natural. So I hope Gorilla keeps going with the natural thing. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's all I was trying to say. But we already know <laughs> Megan got all the good. So let's get into the more pressing matters while we're talking about Gloria. I don't know why I'm calling you by your first name. It's feeling very endearing. I feel like I'm We're going to call Glorilla. Gloria, let's, let's, let's talk eye to eye right now. Thank you for making fuck nigga free. I feel like every woman around the world needed that. We mm-hmm. needed in the anthem to put sense to all the things we were trying to do, what we weren't putting in place because we were not FNF. But when you told us to be FNF, a bitch out of Memphis can't tell me to tell, to tell a nigga that I'm single. Bitch, I'm going to do it. So you know what? <laughs> That's what I loved. I loved when all these bitches were standing on a motherfucking car just telling me, bitch, let's go. Right. It's the let's go part. It's the It's an anthem. It's an anthem. It's a uh, national anthem, as, as I might say. A song has you gotta spell it out. 
I feel like it's always a good like, song. I and D E. Anytime you gotta spell the song out, the song gonna be a bop. Like what? Bananas. B. A N A N A. Yeah, I feel like y'all when y'all bring us back to elementary into the fucking um course, it's always gonna be a hit. So uh, I don't know why conversation. Yeah, why is fuck nigga free so fucking popular? Uh, probably because. Why do you think it's so popular? I think it's popular because sometimes bitches need motivation be t- behind all that shit they be talking. Like, mind you, how many times do we talk bad about our niggas? <laughs> I'm sorry, respectfully. I saw this one How meme. many times we talk bad about our niggas? I feel like we don't talk bad about our niggas. We talk we about, we talk about, about the, the bad shit they, they do, do. And that's what makes them... But why do we always talk about the bad shit? At, well, do we tell our girls what the good shit the nigga does? I always tell... I, I do a good balance. A but good people, balance? Okay. I feel like I do a good balance, but people always hang on to the bad because they feel like the bad is real bad and the good <laughs> is not real good. Yeah. And I'm like, they're like, the real good... They're like, the good... I feel like maybe the bad is real bad because we don't get to feel the good. Because you feel the good, so you yeah, feel like... Yeah, and I feel like also with good, I feel like when people say the what people do is good, they're like, oh, that's the bare minimum. And we're like, most niggas ain't doing that bare minimum. So that good feels real good when yeah. most niggas out here are not doing the bare minimum. Yeah. So I feel like it just gave us motivation to really just feel our bad bitch shit. And I feel like, yes, we say it, but it's like, when you standing on a couch with a fucking liquor bottle in your hand saying, I'm F-R-E-E, fuck, nigga It just free. feels so empowering. So for me, yeah. I think it's just, it was like a motivation booster. Like It is a motivation hello, booster. Hello, that's why I got, went viral. Because we love things that resonate with us. Like yeah. you're saying, that shit resonated. It did resonate. We didn't want to deal with that shit. It resonated hard. And it came at the perfect time to Perfect summer. summer. We're like, we're, we were fuck nigga free. All Looking summer. for revenge. Mm. So were we acting fuck nigga free before the song came out? Were we are, there, was there already a really fuck nigga free anthem movement going on? I think that you said before, like there's always been songs about fuck nigga free, but we didn't call it what it was. Cause let's be res- like, honestly, like things like irreplaceable. So go ahead and get gone. Like she's talking about, she's not going to put up with the shit that nigga putting her through. But she got a new man. And she got a new man. So mm-hmm. she, like literally we have songs like that, yeah. but I feel like putting a word to to it like yeah. saying oh i'm fnf like it, it just sounds it sounds way more free. it sounds more commercial it's, you know it's, it's a gimmick it's, it's a, easy to say it's it, a yeah, I'm fucking free. no one's gonna say oh yeah bitch you're not replaced i mean you're not irreplaceable that doesn't sound cool you are irreplaceable that's what i'm saying you gotta say shit like nah i'm fucking nigga free mm-hmm. that sounds way more like yeah. A, a, and it's raunchy too it's hard it's raw and we love we live for a good raunchy moment we live for the rawness <laughs> so it's only negative if you don't have sense I feel like the whole fuck nigga free movement um, the whole little thing that's going on right now it's just for fun yeah you know, it was like a, little, a little jokey joke a little jokey joke you know if you're taking fuck nigga free to the extreme then it's just like girl like you know c- get, get in on the joke like it's not that fucking serious yeah. but I mean like Fuck nigga free don't always gotta mean like you're single, like having a good time and you know doing your own thing. It can also mean like you don't have a fuck nigga, yeah. Like straight the fuck up. Like the guy you have is not um a joke. So <laughs> I just want y'all to know you can be fuck nigga free in a relationship. Don't yeah. think it's just for the single bitches and you because your relationship you can't enjoy the song and be like I'm f r e e and you can't even be and don't be mad at your girlfriend singing the song too if she's singing and that's it all the loud thing, and proud. Like if she's singing loud and proud, that's really should be a compliment to, to you. you. That should be like oh so I ain't a fuck nigga ah so I she, <laughs> okay exactly. Don't think she's singing about other niggas. She's singing about you unless you are a fuck nigga and she's not talking about you. And I feel like it's only go like we always say if it don't apply. Let let it fly. It fly. So if you get offended when your girl's singing F and F, it's because you probably the F in the F. In the NFF. So for me, yeah, I feel like it's not negative at all either. I just feel like it's how you how you interpret it. It's, yeah. it's like, let's think about it. All songs can be fucking degrading or um me. No, that's me scratching. We always do this every yeah, week. I'm One of say, us does something, we're like, oh, are you trying to tell me something? Yeah, no, it, it, it can only be negative if you consider it to be negative. And I feel like it just depends on, you know, how are you receiving it? How are you why, receiving why it? Why do you yeah. feel like this is a negative song? And I feel like every song can be up for like, oh, that's negative. Like, not you saying that, like, he's singing and you only need love with me. Like, bruh, what if we just vibing? Sometimes, like I just said, we post it just to post shit so whatever like is going yeah. on in life it might not even be about me it might be about my bitches i'm just want to let them know i stand with you i'm an ally i love allies we love a good ally love a good so that's ally. never a fucking problem yeah 
So uh, I wonder what does fuck nigga free mean to you? So for me, fuck nigga free means that I am not dealing with like inconsistency. I'm not Great. dealing with someone that's gaslighting me. Mm. I'm not dealing with someone who is giving me no other option than to put him in the category of rotation. Someone who's giving you the bare minimum. Bare minimum is definitely giving fuck nigga. Yeah. Because I feel like if you don't have access of time for me, then don't try to facilitate a relationship with me because I'm just not the one. I'm a princess. Yeah. Princess treatment only. Only. Soft, Soft life. life. <laughs> Honestly, Soft, Soft life. life. So what does it mean to you? I mean, pretty much the same thing. I'm mean, Being fuck nigga free is just deal not dealing with bullshit not dealing with bullshit that's, that's exactly the bare it is and I, I and even if you're in a relationship you you are gonna deal with bullshit but i feel like it's the type of the bullshit there's normal relationship bullshit always and it's still fuck nigga free it's just normal relationship bullshit. facts and there's also shit that's like damn bitch you got a fuck nigga on your hands mm -hmm. and then the be and when you're single with it it's just not dealing with any of the bullshit because especially you're when you're single because i feel like when you're yeah. single putting up with a fuck nigga is like the most low vibrational we, we're gonna bring that in so low vibrational. vibrational if you're single and you're dealing, dealing with, with a fuck, fuck nigga, nigga. Hey, you having good comes up of having you. Slip. That's ridiculous, bitch. Don't be having no title and you're dealing with the fuck nigga. Don't dealing with the situational shit. Fuck nigga is embarrassing. It's extremely because it's like you oh, are. And we've all done it. We I'm know. Not, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, we are not above situations. Not above Trust it. me, I've been in relationship fuck niggas and I've been situational fuck, fuck niggas. niggas. And guess what? It. I'm on the other side of it. Bigger, better, better, bitch. So that's why I'm telling you, I did Stop it so you it. don't have to do it. That's what exactly. I say. It's and once you do it once, bitch, don't do it again because you know it's a ghetto. It sounds easier than said than done, but you know what? If there is, there's something for you to reference because we're here and we got your back and we're not going to talk about you. And we're not going to judge. We're just going to say that you do deserve better because as every bitch, we are the better. Okay. <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> so what is a fuck nigga? <sighs> what is a fuck nigga? Oh. I feel like this word is used, overused, especially on TikTok. But I feel like a narcissist is a fuck nigga. Honestly, no, it can be absolutely overused, and it needs to be and still drilled be the in the head. Yeah, yeah. Every narcissist I've ever seen, because I I don't know if I don't think I've ever dealt with a narcissist. Maybe I have. I, have. I literally have. Maybe I have. It's actually. traumatizing. Yeah. So you've dealt with a narcissist. So mm -hmm. everyone that I've no I've seen and been, I've always been a fuck nigga because a narcissist doesn't even like have the ability to humanize like they'll get mad at you for like the littlest thing like you didn't do something right and they'll go off like you know so yeah definitely every narcissist i've dealt with has been a fuck nigga or seen i've dealt with yeah do you have any other ones that you wanted to add what makes a fuck nigga yeah i feel like what makes uh, anyone who purposely leave people in situations knowing i was gonna say i was uh, that's what i was gonna say i was gonna yeah. say um a manipulative person a manipulative person is extremely yeah. like you knew exactly what you wanted for the end result so you tailored a conversation yeah. and or a situation to make it seem like that and not only do you manipulate but when you manipulate you double down with gaslighting like are you sure that's what happened because that's not what I try to present to you. Yeah. I told you what I wanted in the beginning. I, 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 you made this narrative in your head. And I'm like, most women do fall for gaslighting. So that's why most fuck niggas can get away with it because we go. And the thing is, what makes it even worse? Most women do fall for gaslighting because a, a woman can see something happen in front of her eyes and, and the guy like, is telling you know, her it's not wrong. happening. I might be wrong. And she somehow formulates how she could possibly be wrong. But bitch, you saw it with your own two you eyes. Know what's, what's the problem is because I feel like I'm not sure if I'm right for everyone. So if I'm wrong, y'all, you know, you can correct me. It just is your opinion, not mine. So I feel that most fuck niggas tend to be very charismatic. So it's kind of hard to look over their flaws because they might be a fucked up person, but they're so okay. fucking nice. Just like every, like cult leaders are always charismatic. Exactly. It's like, and you, we love, we root for like, you know, the nice guys. Yeah. We're like, oh my God, at least he's trying to make an impact. He's trying to do this. But most times you don't understand that sometimes what they're doing is with an ulterior motive. If love someone, bombing. Oh, exactly. So when people love do bombing. some, a, yeah. low bo a love bomber is yeah. a fuck nigga. If yeah. they literally intentionally do this to you because they know it's what you seek mm -hmm. and want a result out of it, 
you're a fuck nigga to me. I'm so sorry. Like, I, even if it's not intentional, do you feel like I oh, honestly? I'm putting. I feel in. like for you to be a fuck nigga, it is intentional. I'm, that's what I'm gonna say. I was gonna, is, yeah. that, is being a fuck nigga? Do you feel like it's always intentional? It's though? always intentional for fuck niggas because they know they're doing this for a specific result. So if you're intentionally doing gaslighting and doing things or making it or manipulating her or making her feel like she's crazy for a specific result, you are a fuck nigga. But what if that's only the way that they know how to love or know how what they were taught. What that doesn't it, make it not a fuck nigga. I know, but I'm saying it's not intentional though. Cause like we said, we, we always talk about rock. If it's not intentional, then you're not a fuck nigga. My my point is if it's intentional, you are a fuck nigga. If that's cause that's what you're doing because you you don't know better, then okay. If it's not intentional, I mean I don't know how you don't you, know, but I feel like everyone kind of has... But you always say intentions matter. You say intentions matter. Intentions do matter, but I feel like everyone kind of has a sense. some kind of idea on how to properly love someone. I feel like even if you are a bad you know, person or bad lover or whatever, you kind of have an idea like, you know, you're abusing this person mm -hmm. and it's not a good thing to do. Even if you're doing it, you might have i don't know i don't i'm not sure i can't speak for them but i feel like i feel like people who do that have an idea of what they're doing yeah i don't think it's ever just like yeah you just, you just <laughs> ran into it for just, no reason and just purposely making this life a person's life a living, living fucking hell. hell because it's an accident okay no. so what is your experience when it comes to dealing with a fuck nigga in, in that per se my experience is always it's always like different i feel like i've dealt with multiple kind of fuck niggas same um but i feel like the the worst kind of fuck niggas i've dealt with are the ones who don't give you a chance to make a choice mm -hmm. the ones who manipulate Say that shit. the ones who don't give you a chance to make a choice are the worst kind of fuck niggas for me <laughs> because i feel like if you are purposely manipulating a situation Cause you know I I don't like this one thing, and you don't tell me about mm -hmm. this one thing you know I don't like until I'm way too far deep, and you know I already like your black ass, and then you tell me, you know what I'm not gonna leave because I'm too. F Those are the type of fuck niggas I don't like. Cause if I knew that in the beginning, bitch, I would have been gone. Hello, but hello, now we're here. Mm -hmm. and I'm dealing with your bullshit because. As women, we give way too many chances. Way and I feel like chances. we should start giving niggas the same amount of chances they give us. Hello, A nigga none. give a bitch one chance. And that's it. And that's it. I think for me, the worst type of fuck niggas are the ones that know that they're fuck niggas and they try to portray it as like, I told you the truth up front. I like, it's like the adverse. <laughs> it's like, what, like for niggas that be like, oh, I want polyamorous, but I can be monogamous. I, I, I. Yeah. Like, it's like they try to like twist things to get to the result they want. I'm like, bruh, like, don't you try to use your honesty, fake honesty, and the say, halfway like, truth? It's the halfway truth, it's and the half -truth. also the omission of the truth is still a lie. Like niggas feel like they tell you half truths, like, "Well, I'll let you know." You let me know you was going to baby shower. You didn't tell me that your baby mom was your girlfriend. <laughs> you, you didn't tell me that shit. You, you Did I tell you something similar to that happened to me one time? No, but yeah. that, that shit happened to me. It happened to you. Too. That happened to me. Oh, the fact that this happened to both, both of us, us is crazy. Like, we, and we never <laughs> talked about this together. And we but never it's like talked because about this I together. never knew that your girlfriend was your baby mama until we were not dealing with each other anymore. So it's like, for me, it's and like... And then the worst part is he had twins, bitch. It's like... The, I mean, he had ghetto twins. It was two different women. Ooh. Yes. This is... Girl. Mm. Hey, why did you tell me they were your baby Nick mamas? <sighs> yeah, so I just feel like it's like, just because you tell us the truth... And the omission of other information does not make you any less of a fuck nigga. Right. And I feel like some niggas be like, well, I told you what it was when we... No, you did not. You told me what you thought I wanted to hear because it was half truth. Okay, well, how do you feel about the niggas who tell you what it was in the beginning and then all their actions is a complete opposite of what they told that's you. A, that's a fuck nigga too. That's a I fuck feel nigga like at too? the end of the day, you're trying to facilitate this fantasy life. And like, I literally was having this conversation with this one man and he said, women don't want the truth. I said, some women don't. And I'm not going to lie and say that they do. But it's like, you have to, like we said earlier, give someone the chance to fucking choose for themselves. I feel like women do want the truth. But the thing is, the way men say the truth sometimes is just too, like, it's just too much truth. I feel like it doesn't have to be too much truth. I feel like, if it is what it is, like 
some niggas will give it to you with grace and be more understanding, and some yeah, niggas will give it to you how they give it to you. And that's yeah. the kind of nigga that he is. So you know how he moves. So but I feel I like the niggas who give it to you raw makes it feel like women don't want their truth. We want their truth, but we damn, do. can you just not say like, oh, I just want to fuck? Like, okay, well, shit. Well, if you're just trying to fuck, I don't want you to put sugar on top of it. I want you. To, I want. I want to fuck you. I want to do this. <laughs> I, I, I. This is what you'll get out of it. If you want to make it transactional, baby, we can make it very transactional. Yeah. But don't try to sugarcoat it. Like, yeah, I want to fuck, and we'll see where it goes. Don't. Give me no motherfucking sugar on top of you wanting to fuck me. If you want to fuck me, take me out to dinner and let's go. <laughs> that's it. So that's pretty toxic. With that being said, <laughs> how do we navigate being so used to toxicity that when a good, a good man comes in, we just don't even like appreciate it. Not even, we don't even recognize that it's actually good. We actually think he's like being sneaky you know what i you think know. because because we're so used to toxic we don't understand what normal is like the um, i don't even know the word i think i might say right or wrong if i'm wrong <laughs> i'm really not the homeostasis in our life like in our body like mm -hmm. of being at peace it doesn't recognize it as being peaceful when we have someone that is not constantly triggering us because we always see trauma bonding and trauma love as a way of connecting with someone like having a healthy relationship sometimes seems people so see it as boring sometimes absolutely and i sent you mm -hmm. that video look she was, this woman said i almost broke up with my husband because he, he i thought it was boring yeah not knowing that i was safe you not safe. knowing that it was a Good. healthy relationship yeah. like we talked things out she, she was so used to such high and lows and me i don't recognize highs and lows as love i think i need to get rid of this motherfucking nigga or he need to get rid of the fuck of me because I don't I don't recognize that as because I've seen that growing up and I don't see that as love. So I me feel neither. like I think it's just your perspective of things. So for me, I think the problem is we many times self sabotage because we're not used to that level of maturity. I feel like that, and we also have to always be very extra careful when we yeah. date. As women, we have to be extra careful when we date because even if a man manipulates and lies his way through your life, it's, you should have chose better. Mm. Like, we always get blamed for... The choices we make. For the choices <laughs> that we make. men make as well. Exactly. That it takes so two because, to tango. So because as women, we have to be, like, extra careful. Not only do we have to be careful, we have to be extra, extra careful. So when a man is being too nice, we're like, okay, so why are you being so nice? Like, that's mm -hmm. kind of weird. Like, you do, you, you doing too much. I kind of, I'm kind of used to niggas who don't do all this. So we see it as red flags because... Hello, if we don't have a, our two step authenticity, bitch. Hello. Two step, <laughs> we gotta have authorization. Bitch, we gotta have the two step authorization as women. Like, that's just what it is. And we always get blamed for the bad choices men make, even if we are lied and manipulated. And, like, not to say some women see the motherfucking red flags, because I'll be on TikTok and I'm listening to y'all sad stories, and it's like, Baby, there was a progression. There was a progression. There was a, this man did this. He did a whole bunch of shit before he got to this point and you ignored all the flare flags. And when niggas be saying that, I'm like, that's not true. But you know what? It is really true. Some bitches see a lot of red flags. And Honestly, as someone that has done it and does occasionally do it, yeah. we see what the is red. It? I don't understand. I think that. we see the red flags, but I like we said the the goods are better than the lows because we're like the we want to reap the benefits of the reward. But you know, if that man saw those exact same red flags with you, he will be gone. Absolutely, and I feel like you know what? That's why. I'm not saying this for all. Are I'm men saying, surprised? No, they are not. Actually, I was I was really going to get into like you know I feel like women they're not surprised. I said, but I'm I said just saying, get, I, are women this, dumb? Like what no, is not it? Not even that. I, this is what I was going to say. I know it might not be great advice. It might not be the advice that you want your mother to tell you and or your best friend. But get what you can get out of it and call it a fucking day. If you see where this man and his red flags are, but the benefit is worth what you're dealing with just you know stabilize don't don't go if the benefit is worth it bitch i'm rooting for you Yo, but absolutely i don't sometimes. i'm not saying i'm not saying fall in love with a nigga yeah. but i'm saying use niggas like they use you yeah 100%. That's, that's literally what i'm saying i'm I'm not saying that's for the best for every situation because some women will literally think they're using this benefits but really be dead ass in love so for i'm just saying just understand the situation you're in and recognize the signs and be mindful every step of the way because at the end of the day you gonna have to deal with the red flags you already knew was there because right. the thing is you knew they were there because he was telling your friends be like a Carisha mm. we already know 
Diddy a fuck nigga, but she is getting the benefits as she's going. So be a be remember that. Be a Carisha. Carisha what would, what would Carisha, Carisha do? Please. <laughs> yeah, just like y'all want to know what Jesus did. What would Carisha do? What a young Miami do. <laughs> <laughs> So do we want to talk about how sometimes we may be the source of fuck niggas? I don't think I'm the source of any fuck nigga. Okay. Why do you feel that way? Because I've never done a man wrong. <laughs> you never done a man wrong ever no. in your life? <laughs> no. Classic Sammy story. <laughs> I've never in the wrong. I'm always right. I've never done a man wrong. Lips, hair. Checks the boobs. I'm never the villain. Never I'm, the villain? I've never been a villain. Um... No, I don't. I mean, did I ever create any fuck niggas? No, I've never played with niggas so hard that he had to be a fuck nigga. Okay. No. So I think that there's some people in my life that I probably made a fuck nigga, and there's some more niggas in my life that I do want to make a fuck nigga because, like I said last week, like last episode, it's time for me to be the villain. If you do something wrong to me, I'm gonna do wrong to you times ten. And revenge might not be that sweet to you, but for me, it sounds like a fucking ten course meal, and I don't get fucking full. So for me, I still got niggas that I gotta fucking um fuck over. I do. I'm gonna create a fuck nigga before my life is over because at the end of the day, revenge is sweet. I, I agree. I'm one of the people that believe in cheating back. Like, I 100% believe in causing all the pain and someone they cause to you. Facts. I don't believe in big, being a bigger person. I do not. Um, like, I, like I've said many times on the podcast, like uh, Michelle Obama said, when they aim low, aim for hell. Bitch, she never said that. <laughs> so let it go. Michelle Obama did say, when they go low, aim for hell. So because of my forever first lady, <laughs> I will forever quote her on that. I feel like I'm I'm feeling like Drake. Like I gotta get that nigga back for it. It's not debatable. It's not even negotiable. That's literally how I feel. I'm like not even debatable. It's not even negotiable. I'm I getting your ass back. I always have to to get like it you doesn't back. even matter if it was two, three, four years. Of, I'm, I'm gonna get your ass back. back. Like and after I get my lick back, we have to break up because we clearly both can't be trusted. The thing is, I don't even gotta be with you to get my lick back. Who knows? I might. How do you get your lick back when you're not with? Them? I can literally probably send a bitch. In place of me. Honestly, I feel like I'm so petty that I would probably pay someone to fucking ruin a nigga's life. How is this bitch? What is the bitch going to ruin, ruin his life? We will fucking never know until I fucking do it, bitch. Okay. <laughs> Got no, to get a nigga I, back. I feel like for me to get you, I mean, unless I just, I, I don't feel like I gotta be with you to get my lick back because there's so many other things. I, I feel like I've like always what, fuck up his car, like fuck up his. Nah, I don't even know. Maybe spread a rumor about him that's like so intangibly like. Do niggas care about rumors? I don't give a fuck. We gonna figure it out rumors. when it happens. I'm gonna be with you. Ten toes down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck your daddy. Not fuck your daddy. I'm gonna fuck your uncle. <laughs> Don't play with me. So, can we <laughs> think of? Do we think of the city girls as the modern day fuck niggas, or do we not? Mm, I feel like the city girls is getting revenge. Okay, it's us getting Looking our fucking for revenge. revenge. It's us getting our revenge, and it's like we've we've come to a point where women are treating men the way they've treated us for so long, mm -hmm. and it's like it's they don't like it. And they're like this older man. I mean, I feel like the younger guys don't really care. Yeah, they don't because the, they want to treat us right, back, right, right, right back. Exactly, the younger guys don't really care. But it's the older guys who date younger women, and they're like, "Y'all gonna be single forever because y'all can't get to, with the program." Why don't you date women y'all's ages so you don't yeah. have that, you know, problem? But yeah, y'all, you can't be 40, 30 dating these young young hoes and think you're not. You have to get that, get that the vibe. It's not you. You getting the fuck nigga out of her. So. I, I I feel like it's just it's just revenge. It's like okay, now you're getting it all back. Because I, I think it's so fucking funny. Because like I saw this one, um, what I posted and I sent it to you on Instagram. She was like, "It's all these middle aged balding ass niggas talking about you will never be a wife, nigga." Thank you. I don't yeah. want to be what a narcissist. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like why do y'all feel like every woman's fucking idea of life is to be a wife? Why do you think I care if you tell me you will never wife me? Have I ever met you? Yeah. Do I fucking care? Like, I feel like niggas telling me that they will never wife me does not impress me. And niggas telling me that I'll they be their wife. That, they think that still, that still holds power. It doesn't hold it, power. It doesn't hold power You can anymore. call me a bitch. You can call me a hoe. You can call me unwifeable. 
It doesn't hold any Do you pay my bills, though? Used to hold. Um, that, that's what that city girl mentality. Now, this is city girl mentality. Like, are you going to pay my bills? Like, are, saying all this shit, are you paying my bills? We're all on that. I feel like we're on that Tracy, Tracy Ellis rock Yeah, shit. like, just living our life yeah. as freely as we want to. And if someone comes and compliments it, that's great. That's great. But the they thing is, marriage is not the end goal for most people. Because most people that are married are not even fucking happy. And I know multiple people. I know people that are married, unmarried, people that have, like, it's, I've met a lot of people walks of life. And let's, let's say, working the nightlife, married men are the most miserable people anyways. So, yeah, that's all I gotta um, say. I think it's just like a little, it's just a way to control us. Like, I feel like. They want to hold over the idea of. Of marriage. Status, of status. Because they're, I mean, they're, I feel like they're upset now that it doesn't mean as much to us as it used to mean. And it's like, Men have to be likable to be married now, you know. And they're not very much likable. They're not very much likable. All they have is monetary things yeah, and headaches. Exactly. Dick and headaches is what most niggas have to offer. So what are some tips for anyone to stay fuck nigga free? Girl, if you want to stay fuck nigga free, uh, stay out the dating apps. I That's feel a good like- <laughs> one. That's a good fucking one. Stay out the... Because them niggas be whole... They just... Put on a whole new personality, and I'm just like I haven't. I've thought about re-downloading it. I'm just like, no, I just don't. I don't want to do it again. Like all the I never had dating app, but I hear horror stories. It's just so many horror stories. Just stay off the dating apps if you want to be fucking. And I don't want to die by the hands of a bumble date. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna ways to stay fucking free. I want to say just stay away from the clubs, the night, the, <laughs> the nightlife, the nightlife. Um, not every person who goes out is a fuck nigga, Facts. you know, a fuck girl, whatever. There's there are genuine people outside, but I want to say stay away from the nightlife people who you see every, every fucking time. weekend, mm-hmm. repetitively. The, those are the people that you kind of want to stay away that's from. A, that, that's a fact. No, honestly, because if I see you more than like two times in a week, I'm like, yo, what's popping, nigga? I guess the same thing can be said about you because he saw you two t- more than two times in one. But week. I work outside. That's the difference. Oh, you mean when you're at work? Yeah. Okay. When I when I work outside, like if I go out outside of me working, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say about me. I promise you, I'm not trying to attract any nigga outside anyway. So I don't like you, outside niggas. So for me, I think that the way you can stay fuck nigga free is set clear, concise boundaries and stand on them. Like I feel like many times when women talk to men, we don't send boundaries. We just quote unquote go we with the flow we try to be the cool girl yeah we try to go, we we try try to go with the cool flow try to go with the flow until we don't go with the flow and then it's the problem and so that's the like, problem because they're like well you were being so chill this whole time what exactly, changed exactly and that so, goes into my next point mm-hmm. when you are making those clear concise boundaries have non-negotiables because like we said like I sent you that video men have non-negotiables and when you break them they done with you don't go back and forth with this nigga like your non-negotiable is not having a kid so if this nigga comes to you and you got a kid if you take this nigga with a kid he be like oh she gonna take anything else you know <laughs> honestly because i don't think anything else but he but, like, but i feel like most niggas they see like in the talking stage 98 mm-hmm. percent of the times niggas want to see what they can get away with and when they get away with it they were like okay i can make her my girlfriend and still do this shit Okay. In my personal experience of dealing with men, because I've done it, I can no, only. I don't I'm disagree saying, with you. No, I'm I feel speaking like only for myself to tell them, because I'm like, I'm not speaking for a secondhand person. I am a literal trauma bonding walking human being that is very much, you know, therapy healed, you know, healing, you know, but all that good stuff. That's really how I'm at. Okay. So you want to talk about how we could separate the person from the fuck nigga? Yeah. Um, I think sometimes people do fucked up shit, but does that make them a fucked up person? Mm -hmm. No. Um, We got to learn, grow up. uh, You know, shit happens. So I feel like all the times when a nigga does something fucked up to us, we're like, oh, he a fuck nigga. Mm -hmm. But maybe he never did be a fuck nigga. Maybe he did just a fuck nigga shit and maybe he's just not the girl for him. I don't know. I just feel like we just got to... Be, not be so quick to label people as a fuck nigga when sometimes they just made a mistake. Because there's some shit I've done, I know for a fact, that was like, oh yeah, she, this and that. But when I think of myself, I don't describe myself as a, you know, a city fuck girl, me. a fuck girl, fuck nigga, whatever. But I've done fuck nigga shit. <laughs> I think yeah. that it is kind of hard to separate the person from their action because 
I think in my opinion, only speaking from my opinion, I feel that it's it's a character flaw. I feel that you went into this knowing, because like I said, we were talking about intentions earlier, but I feel like you can't separate the person from the action if you know the person you're dealing with. So like saying, for example, I'm only speaking for myself. Like if you knew someone asked you specific things about your life and you decided not to disclose that, it's a character flaw. Mm-hmm. And that's instead of me saying that you are a fuck nigga, I'm thinking, oh, he's a lying ass nigga. He's a this isn't type nigga. So for me, I think it's very important to have your best foot forward because actions are only building. So it's like when you build a resume for someone, you are building this in your head. And when you tell your friends, they are initially adding to this character you're building in your head, even if he's probably a great fucking person because you're already getting outside information. That's why I always say, don't tell your friends about, uh, uh, but I feel like I'm not a rational human being. I need some other advice. I'm not going to lie. I am not. So when I tell my bitches some shit that you did and they say he's a fucking, I'm like, you know what, bitch? He is (laughs) like, honestly, like, so that's why I'm not like, I'll be like, I'm like, yeah, I'll play naive, but I got to get that nigga back from where they ain't even know. What is it? <laughs> not, goes ball. It's not even debatable. Like, I have to get that nigga back for that. <laughs> because I'm over here listening. I'm like, I'm like, damn, mommy, you sound crazy. You 29? You sure you 29? Damn, it's time to give that shit up. But yeah. yeah, nah. So absolutely, it's hard for me personally to separate the person from the actions because I feel like actions are intentional unless it is... A conversation is always intentional. I, uh, let me finish until it's a conversation where like my intention was not to do that for you because I thought I was perceiving this. But I feel like certain things that are extensive, like I feel like, you know, what I'm talking about like when someone dead ass is like right up like, oh, yeah, I don't have kids, but I have kids. It's it's a literal action of a character flaw. OK, so I'm just saying little little things like that. It, those are intentional. You don't lie without any regard of knowing what's the consequence of that okay and sometimes it'll just stick those literally just stick so yeah okay that's a fun fucking question questions um my question to you is if you can be a man for a year mm-hmm. would you actually be a good man or would you be a fuck nigga mm-hmm. i would like to think that i would be a michael b jordan i would love bitches for who they are <laughs> Wait, how do you know michael b jordan is a good man I'm assuming. You know him personally? I want y'all to. Y'all text? Y'all, y'all gonna phone? I absolutely want to. Because let's not... Someone's image is probably not someone's who they realize. Do you think I would rather be a Nick Cannon or a Future? No. No one's saying those people either. But I'm saying... My, would I be a good guy? Michael B. Jordan well, a good A lot nigga. of guys say that good guys get fucked over. So I would love to see... I would like to be a good guy to see if that's okay. the truth. Because I think that most fucking niggas get played easily. So basically, that's how I feel about it. But my question is, is it possible to ever be completely fuck nigga free? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't, keep, I don't think so either. It's just the um, level of your fuck nigganess. I feel like some people have very little fuck nigga problems. And some people got bigger fuck nigga problems. But you don't ever get away from fuck nigga problems. You, okay. go, you got something always mm-hmm. up the sleeve. I, and I absolutely I'd agree with that. I don't. <laughs> you are not wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the question. My second question to you is Do you like nut videos? No. We already talked about this. I hate that shit. Like, okay. I've only probably received two or three in my entire life. And when I got it, I was very surprised. And I was really excited. I'm like, who? Mm-hmm. It's a nut video. Because he was in the shower. And then, like, okay, we're not going to get into details. But There's this nut video thread I found on Twitter. And it was actually pretty nice. I it? never thought I was a big nut video person. You were. You said it like a few episodes ago. You like, I don't want a dick pic. You said, I want a nut video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never thought I was like, like a huge nut video person until I saw this thread. I was like, hmm. Yeah, that's my that's my thing now. Cream pies for life? No. Nut videos. <laughs> <laughs> nut videos are my thing. Yeah. So my question is, are you ready for Halloween? Like what? The 31st? or Like in life, bitch? Are you ready for Halloween, bitch? Are you ready for it's Halloween? Halloween now. I mean, like, what's nothing really special is happening. Are you not going out for Halloween? If Halloween's on a Monday, we're gonna be re- we're gonna be recording. We're not going out on Monday. You're not ready for freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at I mean, night. I'm, I guess there's nothing. 
I have planned right now, so I'm not really excited about anything. Anywho, I'm excited to be out with my bitch because we're gonna be, you know, doing the damn thing. Because it's gonna be a. Are we gonna pre- wear this costume? No, but we're gonna be pre celebration for the bitch's birthday. When we're talking about bitches, we're talking about this bitch. When we're talking about this bitch, we're talking about ambitious Teray. So, anywho, thank you for following us on this journey about fuck niggas, non fuck niggas, fuck nigga Tennessee's, fuck nigga energy. We didn't talk about fucking energy. We did not. But you know what? We kind of skipped a whole women's intuition thing. We did. We had to because look, it is perfect perfectly timing. on time. So we are leaving, y'all. While you're at it, please follow us on all social media platforms at the Rose of Spill, except Twitter, which is Zip and Spill One. And while you're at it, leave us a five star rating because we're some five, five star, star bitches. I sip wine, wine, wine Kick my feet up when I get tired And as I recline Take another sip, let my thoughts on wine, wine